Oh yes, welcome back to Marvel Contest of Champions News. It's your Wednesday 22nd of May edition of the news. Lots of stories to go over today from six star Doctor Strange coming in the six star featured crystal right the way through to Alliance Wars Season 10. We got you covered, let's get into the news. Our first story is the story so far. Now this is the third chapter of this and it basically goes through telling the story well what's going on with the Marvel Contest of Champions story arc. The point of start point, the point of end point, the things that our first story is the story so far yes this is the story of the contest and it weaves the tapestry of what has happened from the start right the way through we're on chapter three at the moment and for those that don't really care too much about the story or maybe kind of like go through these quests and like well i don't really pick up what's actually going on this is ideal for you in the link in the description i'll take you to this video this is chapter three so best to watch chapters one and two to get an idea of what is actually going on but i strongly recommend it for those that are too much concentrating on the rush culture aspect of the game and they want the rewards quickly they don't really care for the story it's a small little video it's about three minutes and you'll get yourself up to date with what's going on not completely up to date but up to date to a point in the past. There's a lot more chapters that need to be done. Next up, and a full story on Alliance Wars Season 10, the big update, the big revamp, the big improvement. Will it improve it? Only time will tell. So what's new? First of all, Defense Tactics. It basically allows you to pick a global node or global buff to then apply to all the champions in defense. Pretty cool, pretty unique. But hold the phone, it won't actually be released in Season 10. This is scheduled for Season 11, based on the fact it is massive. It's like, it's a big thing because you could change the whole dynamic of the war. You could put certain champions, it'd be completely ridiculous. Really depends on what we see from this, but season 11 is when you'll likely see this. So what is actually in season 10? The main emphasis is strategy, having flexibility on your paths, as well as having more meetup points. What, like having meet enough for a coffee? This is the point that things get a little bit more strategic because Kabam are hiding some sort of nodes and these certain nodes will basically be that you don't know the champion's power, the champion's class when you go up against it. So theoretically, you're not able to go onto Joe Bloggs' profile pick and go, oh, there's a 565 or there's a strong power index champion or there's a, a, a mutant. So therefore it must be a domino. So domino must be on that particular node. No, that is not the case. You'll have this element of surprise, which is going to be positive to the defender, but also could be a little bit negative to you. But we'll continue on and have a look at some more stuff. The positive really comes from this with flexibility, the ability to jump from point to point and also backing up your fellow teammate. It is not so rigid and you're able to feel less pressure because that's the biggest thing about Alliance Wars is pressure to succeed. And if you're kind of going, right, well, that hasn't, fight hasn't turned out too well. I know somebody that is, uh, that's with me, that's close, that is better at this. It means that they can then get to you to, to indeed to help. So the, uh, the, the bottlenecks or where the point you come in, the meeting points, so they are, are actually a little bit more beneficial. So that is a real positive to see going into season 10, which is very much backed up by the maps. So this is the lower tier of map and this is the higher tier of map. Each one looks very good, very favorable, and at the same time does back up that sentiment by Kabam on the idea of flexibility. The biggest two questions that will come from this are buffs and nodes, and also what are we doing about rewards? Have they been improved? Will they be improved? Are they being upscaled? Well, it looks like in the release with defense tactics. So basically we have to wait until season 11. So what does that put us into June, July? Maybe kind of like end of July, starting August is when we'll see some kind of reboot to the rewards. So that could be it. Unfortunately, it does seem we have to wait a little while, but at least they're on to the case and haven't really kind of forgot that we do need a little bit of a buffer rooney when it comes to those rewards. I'm not gonna talk through every buff and node. I welcome you to go to the link in the description and get an idea. The disappointing side of things, if there's dramatic changes, it does change the way that people are structuring their defense teams and also any kind of advice. So I can imagine people need to whip out their spreadsheets, have a look at these nodes and start thinking about champion placements where they had on X and now we've got to go to Y or say they're on 50 and now they've got to go down to four. It's going to be good to see that people are going to be active for this. But what are your thoughts on the changes in Alliance Wars? Have your say in the comments section below. Next up and the Colossus buff. Yes, a lot of people still ask me about this. When is the champion getting buffed? And the answer is, I don't know. 
could be September, it could be a long ass time. I know people are very instant with these things, like are they instantly gonna be doing this? It's just, no, Kabam will not be doing this instantly. It will take time. I don't think they've even started work on it. Like I say, it could, it could be like August, September, when we actually see it properly delivered into the game. So don't, don't, don't expect it to be uh, instantly. So what of Unstoppable Colossus? Yes, the other version, the other version that gains from the same type of uh, attack animations and things like that. Will it be indeed buffed? The answer is no. It's going to be remaining the same. So if you get Unstoppable Colossus, so you spend all your loyalty on the champion, you're not going to be getting yourself any kind of improvements based on what's going to happen to Colossus, which is a bit of a bummer, but, you know, I don't know. Like I'll leave it up to you guys to say in the comment section whether or not you would have preferred this to happen as well. Either way, Caban felt this is not something to do. I mean, they may even completely rework. It could be a complete rebranding, different look. I don't know what Caban have got up their sleeves, but it would be fun to see what the, what the ideas are. I think a lot of us would love to see a bigger, stronger version. Maybe even something that's kind of not close to Deadpool, but maybe something that's a bit more of a scaler, more wider as well, but we'll see what they got involved. Next up on what the heck is going on? The six star featured pool was announced yesterday, and I'm still very much kind of like, eh? Huh? Not because there's a bunch of uh, new champions in, or weird champions, except for one weird champion. Doctor Strange as a six star champion being added in. I never thought I'd see the day. I, I really didn't. I did not think that this champion would be entered in. And as a six star scaling against some of the other content, I'm quite excited to see what that champion can do. Very difficult at this moment in time to get that awakened, so let's consider that somebody would have to be wailing out like a mf -er in order to get the extent of six stars to then go for loads of six star feature to then potentially get him, you know, quite awakened. So will he be any good as a six star? In the current meta, yes, he'll be absolutely fine as a six star. Will he be able to hit like a truck like most of the other ones? Like even Mr. Cull Obsidian here? Probably the answer is no. Either way, I'm excited to see what could happen. A lot of the new six stars have been added. Good to see Carnage being put into the six star featured. I know a lot of people may disagree with that, but still the buff has been quite favorable for him. And there's a few other ones that are quite all right as well. But what are your thoughts on the six star featured? Have your say in the comment section below. Next up, and are you experiencing any problems with your cult obsidian in particular when it comes to parrying projectiles? Yes, when I tested out this champion for the CTP, I did find that it wasn't always a case you could parry those projectiles. It was a bit kind of intermittent. Basically, are you experiencing that issue? Go to the link in the description and have your say on this thread. But this is obviously focused on Havoc. So if you're going up against Havoc with a cult obsidian, are you indeed experiencing any kind of issues? But for any of those wondering, I think it's not based on the special attacks. It could be something based on the basic attacks, which is said here by Kabam Zibit. So that may be an idea if you're kind of thinking, is that the case? Is it a case I should be projectile parrying? I don't know. But uh, it'd be interesting to follow this thread to see what transpires from this. Next up, and it's a story that I haven't really covered in the last 20 days, and that is all about the champion. Basically, he's bugged. The champion's bugged at the moment. He's gaining too much fury. And I was hoping that it wasn't a bug. I was hoping that it was just a present aid stay. And I haven't really covered this because I, I didn't really want this to be, you know, something Kabam look at because a lot of people are really enjoying the champion. Back at the start of the month, Killer Beezy put out a fantastic video. By the way, go and subscribe, like, and uh, watch all the videos of Killer Beezy. Link is in the description. But he put together this video that basically showcased him doing extensive amounts of damage on a champion like Hulk Ragnarok, and in particular, the way and the scaling and the amount of damage done by the Furies. Now, a lot of players that play with champion will kind of go, well, that was a little bit different. Why, why am I damage outputting a lot more than I used to? So alarm bells were really wrong. And like I said, the reason I don't like covering so much of these is because it provides joy to those that maybe have those champions that don't get that extensive damage output as others do. So I didn't really want to cover this until the point of say, somebody said something, Kaban then say, we're gonna deal with it, it's a bug. So yes, unfortunately, it's a bug. In a nutshell, gaining eight stacks of fury was not correct. And unfortunately, Kabam, when we're notified about this, have decided to make a decision on this and it will be a case it'll be sorted out he's only meant to gain five and getting eight is incorrect so expect some sort of patch on this at some point it more than likely will be by the next update unless kabam do hot fixes which they won't hot fix a lot of the bugs that are currently still in the game 
but are able to do this quickly. I'm sure they'll wait till the next update, so expect in a couple of weeks' time, two weeks from this point, uh, or a little bit less, we'll see some drastic improvements in the game. Fingers crossed. But unfortunately, and that is the code word of today, unfortunately, we won't be able to get the full extent of damage output for the champion. Although I think it'd be, you know, it's, it's fair. There's other champions that do huge amounts of damage, but whatever your thoughts on this, go and have your say on this thread or have your say in the comment section below. And our final story is arena predictions. All predictions are down here at the moment. The first prediction is 38 mil for five star Iron Man Infinity War. I just think that that would be a good cutoff that's not too much into the 40, but still good, strong enough for a champion that is still widely used, especially from a defensive point of view. 7 mil for the four star version, slightly more than normal for a re rolling featured, but I do feel that there's a good amount of hype. I feel that the champion will drop down to about 6.5 mil when the point of the results come in but you just do not know with this, so you need to feel a little bit safe. Aegon, which I think a lot of players will be interested in, I've personally gone for 3.2 mil. If you feel unsafe, you feel it's a little bit too low, push it to 3.4 mil. I'm sure players will then push up to something a little bit silly with that, but I do for the champions. Final cutoff will be around about that 3.4 mil mark. So there we have it, that has been Marvel Contest of Champions News. Got a really funny video for you in the pinned comment down below. So in the pinned comment, there's time codes plus there is a very special video which takes you to my Stormbreaker channel, which is my second gaming channel at the Shoot'em Up Games. And M, my girlfriend, plays PUBG Mobile. And it is a very, very funny video. So go check that out, subscribe, put post notifications on. And if you enjoyed today's news, hit the like button and subscribe as well for Marvel Contest Champions based content. I've been Rich the Man, and I shall see you in tonight's stream at 1900 Hours GMT. Bit of dungeons, bit of objective smashing, and other stuff as well. Do look forward to seeing you there, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye bye for now. Here's where things get a little bit more strategic. Basically what Kabam are doing, are they're doing some hidden nodes. And these hidden nodes will hide the card. It's a much harder to hide the class, which will. And the fake and can't see it, can you are? Are they going to be absolutely broken? So you will.